Welcome everyone to section 6.6. .6. This, this time what we're going to do is we're going to take those laws that we've been looking at, Boyle's Law, Charles Law, Gay-Lussac's Law, and we're going to put them all together in something called the Combined Gas Law. Okay, and so um, in the Combined Gas Law, what we do is we take our P and V relationship and our P and T relationship and our V and T relationship and we put them and combine them into one formula. And I like these because if you're if you're leaving something constant, all you have to do is remember this one. And I this sounds really funny, but um, I've always remembered this by saying pigs vomit over troughs. Okay, pigs vomit over troughs. So P1V1 over T1 equals P2V2 over T2. And the cool thing about this is if you're just looking at pressure and temperature, then you just ignore the volume. If you're looking at volume and temperature, you just ignore the P. So you really only have to remember this formula other than y'all having to know Boyle's relationship, Charles' relationship, and Gay-Lussac's. Okay. All right, so as I said, we're just combining all three of these gas laws, and this is a nice little summary of them. So it's something that you can kind of look at when you're um, remembering what those relationships are. And so we can now look at all three of those by using the combined gas law. Temperature, volume, pressure, temperature, looking for volume, and pressure. So we only, we know five of the six things and we can solve for that sixth element. Just remember that your temperatures must be in Kelvin, okay? Everything else you can is okay, but just make sure that they're in the same units, okay? All right, so if you've got 675 milliliters at 35 degrees C and 0.85 atmospheres, so we've got three parameters this time. What is the volume, because we can only be looking for one thing, of the gas at minus 95 degrees C and a pressure of 802 millimeters of mercury? Now, notice that our pressure up here is in atmospheres and down here is in millimeters of mercury. It doesn't matter which one you change them to, but they ha both have to be in the same units. So in the, in the example that the book is working at, they changed the 0 0.850 atmospheres to 646 millimeters of mercury. And you know how to do that, right? 0 0.850 atmospheres times 760 millimeters of mercury per one atmosphere. Okay? All right, and so then they got 646. Our volume was in milliliters, and they're asking for the answer in milliliters, so we can just leave it in milliliters. And then we have to convert minus 95 degrees C to Kelvin, and we have to convert 35 degrees C to Kelvin. Okay, so once you've done that, you know the drill. This time, you're just rearranging some more stuff. So this time, we're going to rearrange for V2, because that's what we're looking for. So you're going to multiply both sides by T2 over P2 because that will cancel that and cancel that. So you're multiplying T2 over P2 over here. And that ends up giving you V1, P1, T2 over P2, T1. You see why it's so important that you get that down and make sure that you've rearranged that correctly. Then you just do your substitutions. Make sure this time that you your units for both of those that you're getting rid of cancel and leave you with whatever units you're looking for. All right, so here's the one that we're, we'll work together. A sample of helium gas has a volume of 0 0.18 liters, pressure of 0.8 atmospheres, temperature of 29 degrees C. At what temperature? Will the helium have a volume of 90 milliliters and a pressure of 3.2 atmospheres? Okay, so if I'm going to take inventory, and you can turn me off, by the way, if you want to go ahead and try it yourself and then come back. All right, my initial conditions are volume equals 0 0.180 liters, 
pressure is 0 0.800 atmospheres. Temperature equals 29, oops, 29 degrees C. All right, my changed conditions, V2 is 90.0 milliliters. My pressure is 3.20 atmospheres and T2 is what I'm looking for in degrees C. Okay. All right. So I'm going to have to get all of these units into the same. Okay. So it really doesn't matter as long as they're the same. All right. Atmospheres are already the same. So I don't have to do anything to those. I know for my temperature, um, I've got to add 273 to this to get it to Kelvin. So 29 plus 273 is 302, so 302 Kelvin. All right, so I've got that. I got my atmospheres. Atmospheres, that's what I'm looking for. All right, and so then I've got liters over here and milliliters over here. It doesn't matter whichever way you want to do it. Um, I know that if I'm going to convert this one to milliliters, that there's a thousand milliliters in one liter. And so that'll give me 180 milliliters, right? Because liters will cancel. All right, so now I've got milliliters, milliliters, atmospheres, atmospheres, and K. All right, so now <laughs> the formula, it, it's really not that hard once you, you just, all we did was take inventory, make sure they're in the same units. And then we've got, we know that pigs vomit over troughs. And pigs vomit over troughs. And so we're solving for T2. All right, so you know me, I'm going to flip mine. So that's the same thing as saying T1 over P1V1 equals T2 over P2V2. All right, and I'm solving for T2. So basically all I'm going to do is I'm going to take those and multiply them there. So... T1, P2, V2 over P1, V1 equals T2. It sounds hard, but it's really not. Okay, so then I just plug in. T1 is 302 Kelvin. P2 is 3.20 atmospheres. V2 is 90 milliliters. All right, P1 is 0 0.8 atmospheres, and V1 is 180 milliliters. All right, now, right now I'm going to stop, and I'm going to make sure I've got atmospheres that will cancel, and I've got milliliters that will cancel, and I'm going to be left with Kelvin, which is what I have to do at first. All right, so T2 is going to be... 302 times 3.2 times 90, which is 86976. Why do I do that every time? Okay, some of y'all are having problems with your calculator, and if you'll do everything on the top and then everything on the bottom, you won't have that problem. So then 0 0.8 times 180 gives us 144 on the bottom. That's going to give us K, all right? So 86976 divided by 144 gives us 604K, all right? Minus 273. Don't forget that step. And I'm getting 331 degrees C. That looks like a crazy number, doesn't it? Let's see. Yep. Yep, we're right. 331C is what the book got. It's always a beautiful thing when you get the same as the book. All right, and that's all there is to the combined gas laws. There are um, 
all of these problems, you can practice them on mastering. And there's also things in the back of the book. And the, I've also got some tutorials over this in your learning modules, too. So where I've gone through some more problems for you to work. Um, and then go through them with you and work them after you've had a chance to work through them. So, you know, there's no excuse. Don't. Don't do that. I'm not good at math. Okay, you can do these. And and gases and things like that are very important to understand for nursing and healthcare. Okay, because you're going to be doing AB gases and things like that. And you really need to understand what's going on with them. All right, I'll see you back for six seven.